Marvel has lots of strange things in its 75 plus year history. At one point, Thor became a frog named Throg. The Punisher once had surgery to become a black guy. Spider-Man had radioactive, uh, spider sauce. But for my money, the strangest character in all the Marvel Universe is Doctor Strange. I mean, it's right there in his name. And now the good doctor's about to make his MCU debut played by none other than Blamber Snarf Clamber Duke. Love that guy. So to celebrate the weird mustachioed master of the mystic arts, on today's episode of The Dan Cave, we're rounding up some of the strangest Doctor Strange facts you didn't already know. Strange fact, this isn't even his first movie. In 1978, a two-hour TV movie slash pilot was produced for CBS with the intention of launching a full-fledged TV series. It starred Lucille Bluth herself, Jessica Walter, as Morgan Le Fay, you know, of Arthurian legend, who is tasked by a demon to kill Earth's Sorcerer Supreme, Stephen Strange, played by Peter Hooten. She possessed a young woman on Earth named Clea, but basically she wound up finding Strange and his mustache entirely too sexy, and that was pretty much it. According to a 1985 interview, Stanley thought that much of Doctor Strange's failure in 1978 was due to the fact that it aired opposite roots. <laughs> yeah, sure, Stan. Sure, that's what it was. Strange fact, it's all in the name. There was also a ridiculous low-budget 1992 film called Dr. Mordred that looked suspiciously like Dr. Strange, and for good reason. Producer Charles Band had optioned Dr. Strange from Marvel, but the rights lapsed before production began. So rather than scrap the project, they proceeded by rewriting the script to include original characters. And actually, before they settled on Dr. Mordred, they wanted to call the character Dr. Mortalis. You know, that old chestnut. That old, hey, what's a better name than Mordred? Mortalis? Oh, I don't know. It's like if I called the Dan Cave the Dan Hole Chestnut. Strange fact, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. In February 1969, Roy Thomas and Gene Colan tried to goose Doctor Strange's low sales by giving Marvel's Master of the Mystic Arts a fun new costume. Except by fun new costume, I mean they made him look like if Iron Man was really into leather in BDSM. Seriously, he looks less like a superhero and more like a f golem. It lasted for seven issues before Marvel finally gave us what we wanted, that stash. Strange fact, home sweet home. The Sanctum Sanctorum is where Doctor Strange cools his heels in between saving the universe from all manner of supernatural evils. It's also a real place you can visit in New York City. Well, sort of. There's no arcane energy or collection of occult artifacts lying around. Rather, the Sanctum, which is located at 177A Bleecker Street in Greenwich Village, was the old apartment of Marvel writers Gary Friedrich and Roy Thomas. If you look it up on Google Maps, it looks pretty unassuming. But maybe that's just what the government wants you to think. Maybe it is real. Oh, man. Someone call Jessica Chobot, because she's about to get spooky. Strange fact, comics killed the radio star. Well, not really. Both Stan Lee and Steve Ditko were huge fans of a 1930s radio serial called Chandu the Magician, which starred Gain Whitman as the American Frank Chandler, who learned secrets of the occult from a yogi while in India. Adopting the name Chandu the Magician, Chandler battled all sorts of supernatural evils and possessed the powers of teleportation, astral projection, and the ability to make illusions. Sound familiar? It's no wonder that Lee and Ditko admitted they based Stranger's powers and the world he inhabited on Chandu. And bonus fact, Bela Lugosi starred as Chandu in a 1932 horror flick. Bonus bonus fact, Bela Lugosi's Hungarian for Benedict Cumberbatch, so it's all connected. Strange fact, the price is right. But Chandu wasn't the only creepy, cool Hollywood icon that inspired Doctor Strange. Stanley and Steve Ditko have said a number of times over the years that Stephen Strange was inspired by actor Vincent Price. Case in point, Stephen Strange's middle name is Vincent. And that mustache, that's unmistakable. And that power over the occult. Wait, you weren't supposed to know about that last one. Uh, but here's the monster match. Strange fact, doctors galore. Stephen Strange isn't the only man to have donned the iconic red cloak of levitation and serve as Earth's Sorcerer Supreme over the years. In the sprawling Marvel multiverse, characters including Hank McCoy, Tony Stark, Brother Voodoo, Bruce Banner, Silver Surfer, and even Doctor Doom have all taken over the role. So if Benedict Cumberbatch doesn't work out for whatever reason, well, uh, let's just say we've got options, baby. Strange fact, good things take time. 
A modern version of Doctor Strange has actually been in development for 30 years. In 1986, Back to the Future scribe Bob Gale penned a screenplay for Doctor Strange that never got made, which opened with an epic demonic battle that took place hundreds of years in the past. How cool is that? In 1990, Stan Lee himself teamed up with Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas co-writer Alex Cox to create this bonkers version that culminated in a battle between Strange, the Ancient One, Baron Mordo, Dormammu, and even Merlin. Yeah, that Merlin. In the mid-90s, Batman v Superman writer David S. Goyer wanted to write and direct a strange flick that would use as many practical effects as possible, but never panned out. Sad. And then, in the mid-2000s, and this might be the most crushing of all, Guillermo del Toro was talking about teaming up with Neil Gaiman to write a strange film that would have envisioned the good doctor as more of a pulpy occult detective, but would have ditched the suit. But hey, at least we'll always have the 1978 version. Strange fact! Is there a doctor in the building? When Benedict Cumberbatch was officially cast as Doctor Strange, many fans agreed that Marvel had chosen the right man for the job. However, Cumby B wasn't always going to play the part. At one point or another, tons of Hollywood A-listers were considered to be Marvel's Sorcerer Supreme, including Matthew McConaughey, Jared Leto, Ewan McGregor, Tom Hardy, Joaquin Phoenix, Jake Gyllenhaal, Colin Farrell, and wait for it, Keanu motherfucking Reeves. Come on, you're telling me you wouldn't want this guy as the Sorcerer Supreme? I mean, come on! And that, my friends, is a small sampling of some of the seriously strange facts about Doctor Strange you might not have already known. But tell me, which is your favorite? What would you add to this list? Let me know in the comments below, and give me a mystical thumbs up while you're there! Be sure to like and subscribe, or else you might miss next week's episode when we talk about the story of Damon Wayans wearing bulletproof pajamas and fighting crime in Nazi-occupied Morocco in Casablanc Man. Until next time, keep on digging. Let's open up the old mailbag, shall we? At Scott E. Weinberg asks, what was the first R-rated movie you saw with your parents, and was it embarrassing? Thanks, Scott. He's one of our awesome film writers on Nerdist. How you doing? Anyway, I'm pretty sure it was The Matrix. I was 11 years old, and it wasn't embarrassing so much as it was the goddamn best. I mean, I was 11 years old. That movie was great. It blew my tiny little mind. At Big Stockton D asks, Everyone loves Westworld. What story would you like to be the new cable fantasy epic? I vote Deathgate Cycle. Huh, great question. Well, since the BBC is already making his dark materials, I'm going to go with a mature Watership Down style take on Brian Jock's Redwall series. I think it'd be like Game of Thrones, but with cuddly woodland creatures and lots of strawberry cordial. Or is that blood? You won't know, and neither will I. At Jetpack, Paul asks, if you could magically summon one thing from your pockets anytime you want, what would that one thing be? Ooh, this is a hard one. Because of how I originally read your question in my head, I'm going to assume it's something that's usually in my pocket that I often accidentally leave at home. So let's go with Chapstick, because it's dry in LA and I need some damn balm. But tell me, what would you magically summon to your pockets anytime you want? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys next time!